Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Josh. Welcome back to another tour review. And today we're here to take a look at the Ultra Monster 500 series number nine, uh, Keemerman, or uh, Alien Zedon, or as the Mill Creek Guide would call him. Uh, he was also known as the Abduction Phantom Keemer. Um, yeah, kind of a weird character for sure. He's definitely, like, one of those characters throughout the Ultra series that has one of the most, like, weirdest and confusing backstories you can ever think of. Uh, so basically, his he first appeared in episode 19 of, Ultra, of the show Ultra Q. And I'm not joking, uh, the name of the episode is literally Challenge from the Year 2020. Yeah, that did not age well, but uh, trust me, if you look it up or if you watch the show, you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, so, since I haven't really talked too much about Ultra Q, I guess I'll give a little bit of a brief summary of what the show is about. Uh, so, it was basically the first Ultra show, you know, the first Ultraman show ever, basically, back in 1966, you know. And, uh, obviously, the show had nothing to do with Ultraman, that was, like, way before that, because the whole plot of the show was that it just satirizes around, you know, people... Living their day-to-day -day life in Tokyo, and then weird shit happens with, like, giant kaijus and aliens and all that. Uh, every episode, it was always something different. Uh, it, the show is literally known as the uh, Twilight Zone of Japan, as kind of best to put it by, you know, Ultraman fans. So, uh, the deal of, of Kimer here, uh, Kimer buddy, is that he was from, like, a, a dying alien race. So, basically, he came down to Earth and started kidnapping people. Pretty basic shit, basically, obviously. It's like, what else is there, you know? I mean, yeah. I see I got him nice and fresh on the tag right there. You got his little profile there kind of going on, looking all uh, pretty weird. He's definitely one of the more weird and spooky looking type creatures. And, of course, obviously, even after Ultra Q, he would uh, later appear again in Ultraman. Uh, he, uh, I forgot what episode it was, but he was basically helping out Ellie and Mephilus try to take over the world, and, uh, he didn't really do much, he, it was like a, a brief cameo, <laughs> he was barely in it for long, but then in the final episode of Ultraman, episode, uh, in episode 39, Farewell Ultraman, uh, I don't know, he kind of appeared, but, like, they're, Alien Zedon and Keemerman are not supposed to be the same character, even though they both share a very similar design. So, I don't know what's up with that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, confusing as it may be, but that's how he is. So, before we take a look at the figure, like I've mentioned, I got a, uh, I got this figure, you know, nice and new. I bought him at Toy Tokyo during my trip to New York. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, very rarely do I actually review these figures with their tags on. Even though I'm going to take it off anyway, but just to, I kind of show you guys. Of course, you got his nice little picture right there. Uh, this is number 9, so this is a much more older figure. This came out back in 2013, but this is a re-release. So, um, obviously, yeah, it's still, as you can see, it still says 2013 on it. Which is interesting because, uh, real quickly, before I talk about the figure, I got to talk about the card real quick. Well, not card, but tag, but you get the point. I mean, look, even had even has the warning choking thing, even though there's, like, no pieces, but whatever, you know. Nothing in the inside. I mean, it's a, it's a Safubi doll uh, vinyl figure, <laughs> so whatever to call. Uh, but real quickly, I could be very wrong. I'm not sure. Because I know from time to time, Bandai, they like to re-release these figures, you know, because these characters will appear again, you know. And like like Kimer Man, he did reappear in Ultraman Z, if I remember correctly. So obviously, it makes sense that they will want to release him again. Uh, but what I find interesting about his, his picture right here, obviously, it's a much more updated kind of look for the tag. Uh, see his fur and all that. Uh, but I could have sworn a long time ago. Uh, I know the picture. I could be wrong. I could have sworn that it was like him, like destroying like a like a Ferris wheel of some sort in the episode. And the only reason why I'm saying that it's because obviously this figure is actually very rare. He's actually very hard to find. I mean, well, not find, but buy. Uh, he was one of those figures where it was pretty expensive to to find. You know, for figures that were very cheap in Japan. Uh, yeah, finding it online was not easy. There were people asking for, like, way too much money for them. And I, I could have sworn, while I was going through eBay, uh, I saw that weird similar picture of him attacking the Ferris wheel. But I could be wrong. But, you know, I thought I'd just mention that because from time to time they do switch out, the, you know, like, the pictures for some new ones. Anyway, let me shut up and let me just talk about the figure. And, of course, I, there isn't really much to it. In fact, I'm just going to kind of go right ahead and just kind of rip, rip the sucker out of here. There we go. No problem. You see, don't worry, guys. See? No no tear. No rip. We all good. Maybe a little hole, but that, that's okay. These suits were not uh, fantastic for the time, obviously, within, you know, 
the more when they use them, obviously these suits tend to get destroyed. So it is what it is. Also, here's the here's the tag. You know, off, off the figure. So let's take a look at the sculpt and paint. Obviously, I never really have any issues with the sculpting or the paint for the most part. These figures pretty much, they, they pretty much nailed down the look of the characters all in all. So, I never really have any issues with the sculpt, so I don't even bother kind of going through with that. Obviously, it's a pretty, it's a weird character for sure. I mean, just look at the way he is, even his weird hands. I love how you could kind of see like a line thing going on around his arm. Oops, my, set, my setup is falling apart. Uh, ooh. Okay. Anyway, yeah, and uh, hold up. All right, back to our schedule. <laughs> maybe that's a uh, maybe that's Kimmerman doing his thing. You know what I mean? Uh, but right there, you see that there's like a line near his arms. They, you know, kind of making it look like he's wearing gloves. <laughs> so I kind of point that out because uh, it's pretty good uh, attention to detail. I'm kind of shocked that they actually included that. Even though the whole point is that they're not supposed to look like people's in suits, but they kind of do. <laughs> uh, but he's a very, very bizarre looking character. I'm going to just look at how weird he is. He got two eyes there. And, you know, we got a, I'm, I'm assuming that's a mouth, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure. Uh, and then, of course, he got a, another, another eyeball right behind him. So, okay, if that's not nightmare fuel, I don't know what is. And, of course, he got the fur kind of going on. And as you saw from the, you know, picture on the tag, uh, the fur was supposed to be brown. And, obviously, they didn't really paint it. They just kind of leave it alone. And I, I'm just going to say it. The thing with Keeverman is that obviously he got one of those weird designs where they are never consistent. So honestly, for all I know, it, it really doesn't matter what color he is. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to take off. Those are my, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, those, I'm not going to take off any points for that. Obviously, I don't think that's necessarily the figure's fault. That's just kind of the way it is, you know, and it, the paint's good. Don't get me wrong. I like that they managed to kind of get the blue kind of stripe thing kind of going on down they kind of look like they spray painted it but I, i'm not 100 percent sure because one thing i do know for sure is that these figures are uh supposedly hand painted i don't know how true that is but that's kind of what i heard and under the foot it says 2013 on it I'm trying to zoom in there we go and then of course you see where they used to do the whole ginga dx thing kind of going on he still got that and yeah um uh, camera man you know it's just kind of how you look so i'm gonna set my camera down and we're gonna go over the articulation which is not much you know for figures like these obviously they don't really got much going on so obviously for him he got the the arms he could move all the way uh, a little bit full 360 but there's a little bit of a force due to the fur thing right there and his waist does move and you know you could take it out if you want to you could put it back on it's okay it's not going to damage the figure so all in all he got three points of articulation obviously it all varies within different figures they're not all the same so that's just kind of how it is and, uh, you know, yeah, I like, honestly, I like how he got his fingers posed. You know, you can make him do kind of weird stuff and all that. I like that. That's pretty cool. That's, that's a cool figure right there. So, yeah. So, before we end the video, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison. I'm going to, okay, let me see. Because my, my, uh, my setup is not very good. Neither is my camera. Or, or my tripod. Bear with me, folks. It's been a very long time since I've done an Ultraman review. Uh, so yeah, here he is compared to the the uh, the next uh, Ultra Monster figure I do plan on reviewing. Uh, we got Chandler, yeah, not uh, not to be confused for Pipigula or Pipagula. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's okay. We'll talk all about that whenever I uh, review this guy. Because uh, the next figure I'm gonna review might be Zombie Captain America from the Marvel Legends toy line, but I'm not too sure yet. You know, I'm trying to do these videos like every Friday to kind of keep them consistent. And I'm doing it, you know, for you guys. Because, uh, you know, I love pulling out these videos. I like to kind of put them out consistently. So I still I kind of let you guys know. That's kind of the plan. Uh, that's how tall he is. And, of course, another figure uh, that I would eventually take a look at is Windom. Or Wind, Wind, Windam. So there you go. Let's do a little bit of a comparison. So I'm going to lean him back. And uh, he's slightly taller, which is actually good. You know, because most of the monsters are pretty short. Even though they're supposed to be bigger, but we all we all we all know the situation with these figures that they're never size accurate for sure. But as long as the sculpting and all that's good, then I could uh I could give it a pass. And I know what you're thinking, Josh. You love giving these figures positive review. When are we gonna get one that you actually don't like besides Gubula? And don't get me wrong, I love Gubula, even though that figure's not perfect either. Don't get me wrong, uh, there are bad ones out there, but. Uh, it's going to take a while before we get to those. But, hold up. 
I got to show you guys another figure, you know, uh, another character who also appeared on Ultra Q. Here's Kenny Gon or Kenny Gon. Uh, he's a he's a he's a classic. No, no, but like not not a classic because he's from, you know, Ultra Q and all that. But this was actually the second uh, toy review that I've ever done on my YouTube channel. I actually do have a whole playlist of my toy reviews uh just check it out on my channel you'll you'll be bound to find it because i do have a couple of playlists so just kind of give that a look and just to kind of give you an idea on the sizing that's you know that's all he is and of course we got the hero himself ultraman even though he's not in the show but he's you know him and the other ultras fought Kimermans later on so here you go and that the wow that's perfect you know i mean they always nail down the alien look obviously you know like the sizing uh monsters not so much but you get the idea and then of course here they are uh obviously ultraman is still a little taller but kimerman is slightly taller because of that weird thing on his head or just his head in general but you get the point so that's pretty good uh so yeah i mean i can't really give this figure a bad review honestly i mean it's it's i like it you know it's 10 out of 10 how's that and i do apologize that i have to lean him on the wall uh that's only because when I found him at Toy Tokyo, uh, he got that weird kind of funky legs, got that weird feet thing going on where the plastic, it's kind of like a little squished. So I have to kind of find ways, sort of spread him out a little bit so he can actually stand with no problems. And also my setup here is not that good. It's It's got a little bit of a couple bumps here and there. So I do uh, apologize for that. Uh, but no worries, you know, there goes your review of Kimerman, and I'm very happy to finally get this figure after trying to get this for such a long time, you know, it's a classic figure based off of a very classic show, even though it's in black and white, but hey, kaijus are kaijus, you know, it's like, come on, I think you can enjoy the genre no matter what, well, except for Gamera, I, I don't know, the, the Gamera movies are uh, not for me, but you get the point, good figure, uh, you know, I mean, I found him pretty easily. I know, I don't know how you guys are going to be able to find him because buying on eBay or Amazon or maybe any other website, I don't know, maybe Hobby Link Japan because this is a reissue, so you might find him, but it's hard to say for sure. But, you know, that kind of ends it there. Thank you guys for uh, watching the, this kind of funky toy review. <laughs> uh, leave a like and subscribe or dislike it if you dislike it. And I'm out. Peace out.